Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's Writer's Chat. We missed you all last week as we had, took a week off for Thanksgiving, and we're really glad to get back to the routine, at least for the next couple weeks before we <laughs> celebrate Christmas. <laughs> My name's Jean Wise. I'm one of the co-hosts here on Writer's Chat, and I'm joined today by Johnny Alexander and Jan down at the bottom. They're all helping me, helping us monitor it there, and we are really, really glad to have Sherry Lynn back with us. We haven't had her for a long time here with us, and we've missed you. Missed you so much. And you guys. This week we're going to talk, and again, I, did, I didn't introduce Writer's Chat. If you're new to us, this is the place where all writers like to gather to talk about all things writing uh, for writers and by writers. So we're really glad you have you with us, and welcome. We do live in the chat, or if you're watching us on the replay. And we get a lot of you watching on the replay, so we're really grateful for that. And it was developing such a neat community, I think. It's yeah. a, a, a really neat, supportive community. Yeah. That ones that like to meet up at writers' conferences and stuff. And uh, uh, it just, it's great. It's just great. So anyway, we are glad to have Sherry Lynn back with us today. And we're going to talk about something that is one of my absolute weaknesses. <laughs> and uh, something Thank I... You. Get nervous about and I am not good so I am really really I need this today probably more than anybody in the whole group and it is about endorsements getting endorsements so Sherry Lynn, I'm gonna, it, uh, before we get too far into the topic though because you have your own business now of helping mm -hmm. people write book proposals talk to us just to tell us a little bit of PR yourself just a little bit <laughs> here <laughs> tell people about your business because that will lead into one reason why we need endorsements so talk to us yeah. about I'm just, God has taken me on a rocket ship. Can I say that? Yeah. Four years ago, this, around this time, I was, was given the kick in the butt to write. And that was at the New England Christian Writers Conference, which is now called Renew, which Lucinda um, McDowell and, um, oh, I can't think of the other names. Please forgive me, ladies. But um, it's a great retreat here in New England. And I got to meet people like Cecil Murphy and Suzanne and Sean Dune and just people that um, I'm still friends with now. And they've been with me on my writing journey. Well, to make a long story short, I met Kyle Young. Kyle Young got me writing, uh, got me writing a blog post well you know, a column for almost an author and then he said well why don't you become the managing editor i'm like i don't know how to do this he goes i'll show you <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was baptism by fire if i can say that and it, uh, the the uh site went on to win a writing awards and things like that and then i became a junior agent with kyle i started reading submissions by through um, the literary agency and the biggest thing I learned was writers want to write a good book proposal, but they don't know how. And publishers are different with, with what they want. Um, agents are different with what they want in a proposal. So I decided with the prompting of the Lord and the, that to start this business. I started it on Easter, April 1st of this year, and it's been wonderful. And I have to tell you, and I'll be honest, I didn't know everything about book proposals when I, I read probably hundreds, yeah. but yeah. I didn't know a lot about all the different ones, especially maybe even like a child, children's book proposal. Mm -hmm. But what yeah. I did and what everybody else can do, and the reason why we're here is to learn. Absolutely. I went and I studied. I studied book proposals. I got Steve Lobby's course. I got Terry Whalen's books. I got the right, um, what is it? The right, um, the Writer's Digest, their book. Yeah. I just studied and studied and studied and asked questions. And I spent at least two years doing this even before I started my business just diving into um, what writers need to do. And I love to help people. So what I started to do is ask questions. I asked a lot of questions here um, on the literary process. I asked questions to Kyle and other people. I asked questions at, um, at conferences. Don't it, ask a question. The only stupid question is the one you don't ask. Yes, and I so know. I still don't consider myself all knowledgeable, but I have 
more knowledge to help each one that I can. And if I don't know the specific detail of something, I go look it up. I mean, I, I guess I can say I'm a professional book proposal writer now because I've done so many. <laughs> yeah, but, think, think of all the ones that you've read. That, that has got yeah. such a wealth of information. So oh, yes. Often, and I, often as a writer, I may have only written, I don't know, two, three, four, five, six, eight maybe proposals over the course of my career. And you've written, you have read hundreds you bring a really and, good and you learn expert. what people are looking for and you know we have done um we did do a teaching here on book proposals and things like that so i highly suggest people to go look at that and and the biggest thing i tell people is if you're looking for an agent go to the agent's website and see what their guidelines are if you're looking for a publisher see what their guidelines are do they want a query letter first because most agents, I was kind when I was a submissions reader. If they didn't follow the guidelines, I still gave them, I still gave them a chance. Most people don't, they don't have time. It's not that they're mean, they just don't have time. You ladies work on the opposite side, but you have, like Johnny, your daughter has her platinum literary business with, with Michelle Medlock Adams and you know what they go through and you know what it what it's like to write a book proposal but today we're talking about endorsements endorsements I can say I have seen book proposals or ideas that were okay but they had the endorsement of a best-selling author or the endorsement of a international musician if you can get those endorsements and please people don't turn your ears off and say, I can't do it. No. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. Well, um, how do you get the courage to do but it? But I can Are tell you, you how to do it. Okay. You um, show can, I share you, yes. can I share with you my story real quick? Yeah. Yes, please do. Um, um, what I did was for my book, I found people that I admired. And we're gonna go through the, the five steps. I will give you the five steps, but let me tell you my story first. Um, I sought out people I admired who were in the same genre, people who had the same heart as me. And the book that I wrote had a heart mostly for women. Um, that was the main, the main audience. And I had, sort of befriended a best-selling, everybody loves her if I said her name, but I'm not telling, saying her name because I just won't do that. Um, I befriended her, we chatted at a few conferences, we sent emails back and forth, and I asked her if she would endorse my book. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you after I go through these five and we get to that portion, what happened. Okay. Oh, 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 a teaser. <laughs> Here's my book. <laughs> She's gonna leave it hanging. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. that. That's a good technique to use in any presentation. <laughs> right. We, we should know that as writers and as speakers. Jasmine Robert <laughs> says that she says you just have to ask. The worst they can do is say no, which is I'm sure probably something you're gonna pick up that than that. Right. Way. And, and 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 it's all in how you ask. It's how so, you ask. Okay, what's your five the points? First, I'm, I'm gonna give you the five. I'm just gonna give you the five, the five um, items, and then I'm gonna go through each one. Okay, so great. The steps are number one, make a list. Number two, create the email. I will help you create, show you what needs to be in the email. Oh. Number three, the, the the part we all hate, allow time. <laughs> <laughs> Four. Follow up. That's where our stomach turns and we're like, oh, when do I send that email? Did they ever even get the first one? Follow up. And the fifth one is show appreciation. Okay. So when we, those are five steps to getting an endorsement. There's, I'm giving you kind of the basics. There's so much out there. Um, and we have one hour and I do want to add, and I do want to be able to answer questions. But make a list. The people that you can um, get your lists from or your colleagues and your friends who are writers in the same genre, get a list of their names. 
like I did, experts you admire that are in the same field, people who write the same genre, that get their names. Even if it's somebody that you would never think would say yes, put their name down anyway. Hi, Sophia. Um, <laughs> I really like that point, you know, because I sometimes I I sit there. There's so many people. Who do you where do you even start? And yet I could probably list ten writers that I just love their books. I love how they write, and they're in the same genre. And I love when I read them. They just they I just sit there and say yes, yes, yes. And I never thought about. I hate to use this word, starting to groom them, but get, grow closer to them. And because I'd hate to ask them, Cole, are you saying we could ask them cold, even if we don't have a relationship with them, or should we establish that a little bit more? Either way, we're going to talk about how you can establish a relationship okay. with them on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, but make your list, and let, let me tell you know, get people who endorse similar books. There's people out there who like to, they don't endorse everybody, but they like to endorse books. Okay. Now I, I'm still trying to find a list of people who do that. So. <laughs> but there are, because there's so many genres out there, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm writing nonfiction, a nonfiction Bible application book, but I'm also writing a nonfiction that has to do with prophecy, a devotion, and then I'm writing a fiction book. I can't ask the same people, no. right? No. You can't. Um, you don't want to ask Stephen King to um, endorse a Christian <laughs> devotional. No. If he did, I bet you would sound. <laughs> but I want to tell you, you know who inspired me in this? Was Lori Rollabout. You guys know Lori Rollabout. Yeah. Now, her book, Running from a Crazy Man, is not about a psychopath. It's just, it's, it's, you got to get the book. But she wanted to get Jerry B. Jenkins to endorse it. And she was told he does not endorse any books. She prayed. She sent it. He sent it. He emailed her back, said, I couldn't stop reading it. Yes, I'll endorse it. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, so, that's inspirational. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there you go. Always don't give up hope. So make a list is the first one. Um, your colleagues, your friends, you can ask them too. Experts you admire, experts in the field. You may not even know them. Um, I've gone on Amazon and looked for writers in certain fields for my clients. Mm -hmm. And I said, these are people who are experts in your field. Why don't you look at their books? Don't just ask for the endorsement if you don't know what they're writing. Right. Um, and email, email some of them, and we're going to tell you how to get the information and everything. Um, and once you have this list, I, I narrow it down to about 10 people. 10? Mm -hmm. Okay. But you, I mean, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to do 20, you don't know how many you're going to get back. Yeah. But I would do 10 at first. What do you recommend in book proposals to have? Or do you have, are you going to talk about that? Like if, if, if I was putting together a book proposal now, I should strive for how many. You need to be, if you're writing a book now, you need to be, do, you need to be trying to get endorsements now. Yeah. yeah. So you could, especially if it's a nonfiction book. Yeah. Because and and some people, when we get into what do you say in your book proposal? I mean, I'm sorry, in your letter mm -hmm. to them. Sometimes you can put your own little blurb in there, and they'll say yes, you can use it. And we'll get to that. Okay. But I want to answer you on how because you make your list, you've got your list created. Now you want to create the email, but. It, you can cold call people, but I would follow the six ways to try to contact them. There are ways. I, I If you want these six ways, okay. this would be under to contact them. This would be like a, a, an initial contact. Um, and and as, as believers, it's hard. We want our motives to be pure. We don't want to just follow someone on Twitter because we want their endorsement, but then we yeah. want their endorsement because we got to follow them on Twitter. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's difficult, but start following them. Okay. Follow them on Twitter, but 
I'm going to read these. Find their website and look for the contact information. Okay. And I'm going to go over that as far as writing the email, what, how to get all that information. Um, check their material, their books and their training. If they have training material, is there an email on there? Um, you can go to Google Plus to find their email address. This is something that I didn't realize. You can private message them. Um, mm -hmm. Private, the experts say private message their personal profile, not their author page. Oh, ooh. And if, and I didn't realize this, and if I'm wrong, somebody tell me, but I, I did a lot of research on this weeks ago, but it says if, you were, if you're not their friend, I don't like this, but if you're not their friend, your email will end up in their other inbox unless you pay Facebook a dollar. Um, you could pay Facebook a dollar. No, I, I, I don't, never heard I know, I don't like that. I don't recommend it, but private message them, make initial contact with them on Twitter. So mm -hmm. you can Twitter, private message them two ways, find their email address at their email website or in their books or via Google Plus. So I would make, I would make an initial contact. I really would because um, there's writers that I admire like Lee Strobel. Um, oh, who are the other ones? Like my, the, my um, brain injury is kicking in That's right now. Who, Max Lucado. Yeah. I like them and I follow them and I retweet their tweets and I, and I actually get stuff. They retweet some of the stuff I say and like it. So one day I might go and ask Lee Strobel, if he might endorse one of my books. I was thinking the one lady that I really like, uh, Ruth Haley Barton and stuff has a podcast and I've done like a podcast review for her, but you could do a book review, you know, so it, or yeah. comment on her blog posts. Just enough. Yeah. You know, that's a way, because in a way, again, you know, said we're walking a fine line. We don't want to use them, but in a way we're helping them also by doing that, you know, so, we're so what I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to love it, how to create that email, which we're going over now. One, make your list. And while you're making your list, I would, I would make soft contacts with people. Okay. Because you admire them. If you, you don't want someone endorsing your book that you don't admire. Right. Um, and also before you contact these people, something that's coming to my mind Make sure they're a person that you actually want endorsing your book. Yeah. Um, do a little, little bit of research on them because unfortunately I have to say that there's some been some people in the media lately. Uh, five years ago, we would have wanted their endorsement. Yeah. Now we wouldn't, yeah. you know, and I won't go into names or anything like that. Yeah. So just do your homework, okay. but creating the email, Okay. I will give you some examples of emails, but research the author. That's what, that's what we've been talking about. Research the author that you want to endorse your book. Check the website, of course, for the correct spelling of their name. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Absolutely. The proper email. Um, some authors have agents that handle all their endorsement requests. The person that I requested personally emailed me back, but had an agent that gave me the answer. And I'll tell you what it was in a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's my other book. Um, but always, always, always research. Um, and when you write your email, be pleasant, professional, and not presumptuous. <laughs> this is the best book ever written. <laughs> it's better than yours. <laughs> Yeah, this day God that. told me to say. Right? <laughs> I've heard some. I've heard some authors talk about letters they've gotten, and they've gotten letters like that for endorsements. Wow. Greet the author with a compliment and be sincere. Yeah. Um, keep your words to a minimum. Be clear that you want that author to endorse your book. Acknowledge that the author is busy and sought after for endorsements. Yeah. And then ask the author how they would like 
if they if they say yes, how they would like the version sent to them. Not all of them want Word, not all of them want PDF. Some might want an EPUB or they might want it mailed to them. So ask that and thank the author for their consideration. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to share with you. These are the guidelines I followed when I asked for an endorsement. Um, and I am going to share with you the letter. Let me find it. I have it right here. The letter that I sent. Hi, first name of the author. <laughs> Yeah. If somebody wants a copy of this, and, and there's other ways you can do this. Um, there's ways to do it if you've never met the author. This is someone you've met or highly respected. Hi, our prayer group truly loved your book. Name of the book. I also gave the book to a young believer that I disciple. She loves it. I know th these are words that are good to write down, but you, you, I can give you a copy of this. I know this may be a long shot. But would you can consider endorsing my first book? Blah, 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 blah. My, my first book. If so, what is the process? I know you probably get many of these requests. I understand wholeheartedly if you cannot endorse my book. Your friendship is far more important to me than a book endorsement. Thank you for your consideration. I like that. That's nice. And that's, that's what I wrote. And there's other ways that you can write. Um, but the main point is acknowledge the author and their works. Mm -hmm. um, if it was somebody I didn't know, like Lee Strobel, I'd say, dear Mr. Strobel. I wouldn't say dear Lee. Yeah. This person, I use their first name because we're on a first name basis. But I say, dear Mr. Strobel, um, you're, I follow you on Twitter and we've had some conversations about my son who is autistic um, and he's doing your books for uh, his homeschooling. This is what we talked about on Twitter. Oh, darn. I thought I threw my phone off. That's me struggle calling. No. Oh, no. <laughs> And I would go on and say, you know, and I would go on and say, you know, something, always write something a little like about their book and what you liked about their book, a book that they wrote. So you should look at some of the books of the author that you're asking. And then just go into, um, I know you probably get asked many times. I want, you know, thank you for your consideration, things like that. Um, there's a lot of examples if you Google them. This okay. is my personal example after all my studying for, for a personal letter. And I want to tell you what happened. She emailed me back. Yeah. Dearest Sherry Lynn, I would love to endorse your book. However, my agent, this was three, two, two and a half years ago. However, my agent does not want me endorsing books for a year because I have three books for a deadline. I appreciate you. And, and, and it was a great letter. In and a I didn't know. I, yeah. She goes, thank you for acknowledging that, that I get asked all the time. She actually thanked me. Wow. That very I acknowledge personal. that she gets asked all the time. Yeah, very personal, very yeah. personal. And, but somebody you don't know might not be that personal. But if you are a professional, appreciative, and, and like I said, and not, don't assume they're going to get, give it to you. Mm -hmm. um, don't beg, just make it, to, oh, please, 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 don't do that. <laughs> Don't beg in your letter. Well, but, Sherry Lynn, one thing I'm, I'm a little confused about is that, okay, as a nonfiction writer, I write the book proposal first before I complete the book. I understand that process. And you said start getting endorsements now, but how do they know it's my, how will they know to put their endorsement on a book that one, they haven't read, two, I could be the worst writer in the world what well, they, they will want they, to endorse it. What how they might that's why you you ask them you can ask them their view over how they do that. 
Okay. They will ask you, they, when you ask them, what is the process? Okay. And if they say, and you tell them the book isn't complete. Okay. But they will come back. You have your book proposal done. You have a blurb back cover blurb. Yeah. Um, in, in, in your letter, you can, and my letter was a little more personal in your initial letter. Um, make sure I, you, make sure that you ask them do you want me to give you sample yeah like a sample chapter or ask that. I, I agree with you you could if, if you're into the proposal method you've got uh, level you've got, you should have a good description on that so you should have just, like um, 50 pages right at least 50 pages yeah say that again johnny you should have at least 50 pages or it's two chapters, two or three yeah. chapters. Right. Yeah. Yes. So to to send them to, um, I would yeah. start the process is the key question. Start the process of getting the people. You know, I I wouldn't send the emails until you know. Start the process of all the people that you want. Write your emails. Don't send your email until you have, like Johnny said, the fifty first fifty pages. Um, and, and I do believe with a fiction book, they want to read, they'd want to read the whole thing or at least the chapter synopsis. Yeah. So, um, I read the whole book, um, when people, and I haven't been asked a lot, but a couple times and, and I'm doing one now <clears throat> and I want to read the whole book before I write the endorsement. But it's, I mean, I don't know if you're going to talk about that, but that's a little tricky place to be in too, being. <laughs> you were asked so why don't you, you we just uh, i'll review the letter itself um again what what you need in your letter but tell us as someone who was asked that johnny that is quite that is awesome i'm impressed <laughs> no that is that is awesome to be asked for an endorsement for a book tell us how it made you feel and tell us what you liked and didn't like about well maybe you don't want to say what you didn't like but. well no i thought it, it did okay well it always makes me a little nervous when people ask because it's a new writer and i don't know and, and that's been the case and i really don't know their writing but <clears throat> it's scary it's scary for me because i want to i want to you know your integrity counts for some things you put your name on a book but also, friendship <laughs> counts for something too. <laughs> and so there's that tension, right? Now, fortunately, the first book, I, I think if I'm right about this, Lindsay Brackett, uh, I believe it's called Still Waters. Excellent, mm -hmm. wonderful book. I loved it, loved it, loved it. So it was very easy to write. It got a lot of awards at Blue Ridge. <clears throat> yes, it's very, very good. And, and I was very honored, but Lindsay and I know each other. I mean, we'd had a relationship. So, I mean, I was a little scared when she said, will you endorse it? Cause it was like, oh my gosh, if I don't like it, yeah. you know, she's gonna hate me and da da da. But that one all worked out. And then recently I was asked to, to do one. And this was really cool because the gal was um, somebody who had entered an ACFW contest, American Christian Fiction Writers Genesis contest. And apparently, I don't really remember it, but I must have been the judge. And she wrote me and she said, you wrote such kind comments um, on my entry and now I'm writing the book and will you endorse it? So I said, you know, I'd, I'd read it and, you know, and it's, it's pretty good. So, you know, I will write, write that endorsement too and it'll be positive. Another person, sent me, it was a published book, and um, asked to, you know, to, I guess more be an influencer and that kind of thing, not an endorsement. And I read the first 20 pages and couldn't stand it. And, and, and I just let it go. And I feel bad about that because, you know, it's like I never wrote back, but it's not anybody I really know, I had no relationship with. I just thought the topic of the book sounded interesting. When I saw the call out, I responded. It, it does put you in a tight spot though sometimes. Mm. You know, it, it can. So, you know, there's that. Inter that's interesting insight, you know, and then it goes mm -hmm. back to us, as we're all Christians too. How do we handle that in the most loving, kind way? 
Yeah, and I don't think I <clears throat> did. I mean, I don't know that I should have gone back to that down and said, listen, I'm sorry I didn't follow through. Or if it was best just to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they didn't follow through, which is that oh, one yeah. of the upcoming steps with you either. They so that's that. well, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about following through. Yeah. That's something that you just have to ask the Lord. Do you want me to follow through and tell them this is why I won't endorse it? Um, loving, constructive criticism because it might make them a better writer. Oh, that's an interesting point too. You know, well, it might make them. A, and then if they don't like that, then that's that's them that's on them not on you johnny yeah you know when i when i do book proposals i'm helping a really good friend with his book it's not even his book proposal yet and i said anything that i tell you i go up front with all my clients to anything that i tell you uh, with my editing and, and anything that i tell you is out of love and because i want you to be a better writer and I'm still learning how to be a better writer myself. Yeah, but we all are. I mean, I think there's, there's, there's a never ending process. And like, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's principles in writing like um, resist the urge to explain, point of view, um, things like that. Um, that my really good friend in his first chapter had a lot of challenges, but because I prefaced it with. I'm here to help you. And, you know, it, and he was like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, that's what's so good about the Christian world. We're, I, I think 99.9% .9 of us want to help each other. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't say 100% because I've met a few people yeah. out of the thousands that I've met who were, but that's all right. God will deal with them. I'm sure you've met them too. <laughs> met a few of them. Not, and I've only met them briefly. So none of, none, none of you who are on here, I love <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is a great group. We, we've got, we're blessed. We are yeah, we, we have a, a phenomenal group. So let me tell you more, about, I'm going to go over number one, make your list. Your yep. list needs to be aim high. No, you don't have to join the air force, but you can aim high anyway. If that's the air force <laughs> thing. That's the air force <laughs> thing. Um, I was in the air national guard. I'm sorry. Um, I digress. Um, Aim high. Who? Who do you want? Who would you love to get an endorsement from? Put their name on the list. Write them an email. Nike, just do it. <laughs> uh, you, you can get, ask your friends who are in the same genre as you. Um, ask your agent who you think good endorsements would be, especially if you're a new writer. Just because you're a new writer doesn't mean you can't get somebody big to endorse you. They may read your book and go, wow, you know? So, um, and so one, create, a, make your list. Two, create your email. Your email, you need to research each author. Make sure you spell their name right. Make sure you have the right email address. If they have a, a um, agent, or publisher or somebody go through them don't go don't try to go in the back door I had a personal relationship with this person if I didn't I would have had to go on through the publisher go through the publisher don't assume often in, and often in the book doesn't a lot of times on like the about the author page or in the acknowledgement page or something like that it says if you want to contact the author and then they'll it's yes. less, this through the publisher yes. right there's they have that in the books Correct. Yep. That's a great point, Jean. So get the right address. When you write, be pleasant, professional, and not presumptuous. I like that. Three P. Uh -huh. One of them yeah. know. <laughs> pleasant, professional, not <laughs> presumptuous. <laughs> Read the author with a compliment and be sincere about your compliment. You know, even if you've never, if you've never read their work before, and you just, if and you just started reading their work maybe even if you're reading it and there's something that stood out to you a line mm -hmm. you could say um this this quote really struck me or i was encouraged by what you said and put it in quotes and but be clear concise and to the point they want to know they want to know too that you know about them 
like you, if somebody, Johnny, didn't you want to know the person that actually knows who you are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that they maybe have read a few of your books. <laughs> exactly. And they, you know, and when they say that, that's nice. Well, and with Lindsay, you know, she said, I felt like my book was very similar to your contemporary romance. And really, it's true. We both are very, we both have that that sense of place in our books. We have a lot of that where, you know, you can tell, like I knew Lindsay had a connection with the setting that she wrote about. And that comes through in my stories too. It's, I mean, it's grounded mm -hmm. in where I grew up and you can, you can tell that. So not to get off on all that, but yeah. Yeah. No, but what you just That's said, yeah. what you just said about where you grew up, if you, if you have something similar with the author, like you both like the Cubs, Michelle, Michelle Adams, yes. <laughs> or you, or you know something about them, like they like cats or dogs or whatever, don't make a big paragraph. Just say, I like the fact that you, something personal mm -hmm. that they know that you know about them. So acknowledge that the author is busy and that they probably get tons of uh, endorsements. Don't you want to be acknowledged for your for what you do if you're a hard worker and if people are wanting your time? People like to know that you're aware of that. Mm -hmm. Us as moms love to know that. <laughs> <laughs> we want our kids to acknowledge that we're too busy. And, but they do, they you know, really you know, like that. Something else I think it does is that you know, when you get asked to do anything, you don't, you're not looking for an excuse to say no, but it is awkward. We've used that word. Mm -hmm. And the way you've laid the groundwork to take that awkwardness out if they choose for whatever reason to say no. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. That their agent has told them this, you know, in which you did not know that. But yet you laid the groundwork there that was that reason. And, you know, the, I, I just think sometimes it's, giving somebody grace already not that you want mm -hmm. them to say no you don't want them to say no but yet it again it just removes that uneasiness and, and i think you what know, you've talked about having that relationship i mean but like some of these people they don't know you but they know your name i mean you've been having you have that relationship and like the gal that said you know you two you had this connection with acfw well, obviously, I mean, right away, it's like, well, yeah, of course I want to help. If I liked your yes. entry, well, yeah, you know, so there's that, you you do want to because of that. Where if it was just somebody out of the blue that could say nothing personal, it's like, I don't even know who you are, you know, and I've got deadlines, I've got this, that, and the other thing. That's but great, yeah. That, yeah, even just a little thing is going to make that person mm -hmm want to help you, you know, you have yes. those connections. Yes. Good point. And ask the author, what we just left with is acknowledge that they are sought after for endorsements and ask the author if they want to, how they want you to send it or what the process is um, and how they would want it sent. Mm -hmm. Make sure, um, that you ask them also if they want a sample endorsement. Mm -hmm. Make it easy for them. Um, make it easy. And above all things, thank them for their consideration. Mm -hmm. that consideration doesn't mean, I end all my correspondence when I ask people for something. Like with almost an author, when I had to ask all those best-selling authors if they would, if they would come and, and do our, um, you know, Stephen James and yeah. Jerry B. Jenkins and Cecil Murphy and everybody, I had, I had to contact them and say, would you, cons would you do this for us? Would you fill this out? Thank you for your consideration. That means it kind of lets them off the hook because they're considering it and you're thanking them for considering it. You know, I only had one person say no out of everybody. And that's because she was on her wedding anniversary. She just gotten married and she promised her husband she wouldn't do anything. And I said, that's a great excuse. That's Everybody else said yes. They, and I think it's because it's the way you word it. Mm -hmm. 
goes back to what Jan says, is no harm in asking too. The worst is the worst. And I, have, and I highly suggest you, re, you, you go online and review samples of endorsement letters because there's different, there's different, um, different genres, different people, uh, different types of people. Um, if you're gonna, if you're going to, if you're writing a how-to book and you want to get the endorsement of uh, the president or CEO of a company, it, the letter might look a little different. It will have the same things, but you might word it a little different. Also, if you read a bunch of uh, them, you develop, again, your own voice. You do. You know, yes. you, yeah, you take the style and think, okay, this is what I want to say that reflects this, but it's in your own tone, your own approach. Yes, own great, approach. great point. And so one, what we do is we make the list, two, create the email, three, we give, we allow time, we give them time. And this is the hard part because I don't know about you, but I don't like rejection. <laughs> and if I have to sit and wait to get rejected, you know what I mean? I'm not saying that, <laughs> you know what I mean? You get an email and, you're, and you see it's from them and you're like, but it's all part of the process. Don't expect rejection. But make sure you give um, the endorser plenty of time to respond to your request. At least four, four six, eight weeks sometimes. Um, give them time. And in, in between time, be working on your book. Yeah. Uh, Watch John. Uh, watch uh, writers chat. <laughs> yes. Go have coffee with friends. Keep your mind off of it Busy. because the endorsement does not define you. Like I think Johnny said it so beautifully. I wanted to endorse this person because we had a connection. Most people, I think, if they can, they will. If it's something that they want to back. Mm -hmm. Not all people are out there waiting to send a letter saying, no, don't even bother me. How dare you? People aren't, most people aren't like that. Yeah. Right, right, Johnny, you agree? Oh, yeah. So keep yourself busy when you allow time. So that's three. Four follow is up. the follow-up if they agree to endorse your book or if they don't endorse your book. If they agree to endorse your book, Make sure you follow, I'd say follow up immediately. Um, a lot of people say one to two weeks. I mean, if you, I would say follow up within a week. I wouldn't even wait two weeks. Um, you might want to, if you get it that minute, I mean, I, I would write the letter, make sure somebody looks at it. But um, make sure you follow up as soon as you can. Um, because many times they will be busy and forget. So give them a gentle reminder that you, they said that you would follow up with the, with, that you would do the endorsement. Um, if they don't get back to you, yeah. I'd wait a week or two and do it again. Because, and, and, and they should get back to you. Now, if they say no, thank them. They say no. Yeah. Go have some chocolate ice cream, cry. <laughs> um, get together with other writers because if you if you listen to Stephen King's um, on writing, there's some f bombs in there, so you got to go like this. But he was rejected so many times. Jerry B. Jenkins rejected. Jerry B. Jenkins, I think, still gets rejection letters if I remember listening to him properly because I'm part of Jerry's Guild, they, just because he's Jerry B. Jenkins, he still has to write a book proposal. Jerry. They may say, no, we're not interested in it. He still, he still gets it. And I'm not, and, and some people may not want to in, endorse us because it's not their genre and they're not familiar. Don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. Um, if what if you don't hear from them at all? What if you don't hear from them at all? I would wait. I would wait like four to eight weeks and maybe send them another one. Okay. Wait. I'd wait a month and maybe send another one. I'm one of those people. At I, least one I, I, I lean on the lesser time side yeah. um, because it could have 
it could have gotten lost. Um, let me give you a for instance. Um, with book proposals, there are best times to send book proposals, and those best times are today's probably one of the the last days to send your book proposal because the holidays are upon us. Mm -hmm. Right. People are not, and this is from publishers and um, agents' mouths, not mine. See, I, I, I just work, I'll do something the day before Christmas, but I'll make sure, I work from home, so I'll make sure I have fun too. But if you're working in an office, there's other things that they're probably doing. They've, they, they've got to wrap up the end of, end of your business and things like that. So the best time is, this is probably the latest, this week would probably be the latest, and the best time next year would be the second or third week of January. Got it. To, to do that. So think of um, their lives too. I know during the Christmas vacations, we're probably as writers trying to write, and we're, we're probably thinking of, um, you know, did they get my endorsement? Well, maybe not because they're off in Aspen skiing. <laughs> we would hope so. But seriously, um, but to answer your question, Jean, four to four to four to eight weeks, I would send it again. And then follow you know, up. I like your idea of two. I get I get strange because my blog's healthy spirituality. I get strange cold emails to put foot cream on my blog about health, you know, it's healthy. Oh and I've read your blog and I like it a lot. And I was like, what? You know, you haven't read my blog, but anyway. Right. And we but get those often, that almost an author. Yeah. Yeah. And often it's about four weeks later, I get a second one. I just delete them because it's not, doesn't match, but rarely do I get a third or a fourth. It's just one. And then X number of weeks later, I usually get another. And I got one this morning. I just deleted it. I mark them as spam if they come to my, the website. I mark yeah, them as spam. But I think it's very reasonable. Uh, as, as the host there, I understand what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and if they would continue to send things out, I think, what? It, then I would mark them spam. But you know, two times, I know. But see, so you I, actually I, noticed I, it the second time. You noticed it more the second time, I bet. You're like, I already saw this, but. Yeah, I knew. I, ah, I'm not gonna follow up on this. But it's it's like, and some I do respond to, depending on if they're close, but not quite. But hmm. I think your idea of one and then a second time is okay. I mean, that's a good And then I would still wait another four weeks. And if you don't hear anything after that, just let it go. You know, if you, if you get really, it, it, one thing as writers that the first thing that I, one of the first things that I learned as a writer was to get a thick skin. Yeah. Yeah. Get a thick skin. Um, and we, we will get rejected. I mean, <laughs> go, go read how many people get, you know, like I just said, there's so many best selling authors who get rejected, still get rejection letters. Like, nope, we don't, we're not interested part of in the business. It's just part it of the is. business. It's just part it of is. Business. It's part of it. So then we've only got about five minutes left when we wanted to. Yeah, well, let me, the last one is show appreciation. Yep. Yeah. Number one is, is make a list. Two is create your email. Three is um, allow for time. Did I get that right? And the fourth is follow up. And the fifth is show your appreciation. And that is if you get accepted. Yeah. Make sure people, the endorsement is going to be in your book. But go on social media and thank that person. Make sure that person gets a signed copy of your book. That's yeah. very important. A free signed copy, That's maybe important. two. Because yeah. that's, that's an extra thank you. Make it known because if you write another book, mm -hmm. that person's going to be like, hey, they might write you and say, hey, can I endorse your book? <laughs> you know? Because, I mean, you think about that. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know somebody put up the, um, the, the, five, the five steps, and I thought that was they nice. Like their own thank you. Yeah. I think so too. Why don't you invite people to come on back in? I was gonna say, everybody got any questions? Yeah. We got about five, six minutes here left. The biggest, the biggest thing though that I highly recommend is research, research, research. 
Yeah. I and really I, and if you're like, unsure, go, you finish what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And if you're unsure about what you're writing, have a friend that you're close to yeah. read the email, but somebody who will not just give you a pat on the back and say, Oh, this is awesome. Just cause you wrote it. Right. No, somebody, I mean, you can send it to me if you want. I'll look at it. I won't charge you for it. I think within um, our writers chat members too, yeah. we can read each other's email. We, we can help each other. Jerry Jacobs, yeah. what do you think? You know, <laughs> have somebody look at it. And, and if you're having a difficult time, get somebody to wait with you. Or if you don't know who to ask, um, ask somebody else to help you. That's why we're here on writers chat. I mean, I ask a lot of questions and I love, I love when people ask me for help. Because if I don't know it, I go look it up and then, then I get to know something too. <laughs> Johnny, what were you going to ask? I'm just going to say be brave. Be, just be brave. It's such just do it. Be brave. And it is. Just, just be brave and do it because you never know. And like Jan said earlier, the worst that can happen is you don't hear from them or they say no. That's but at right. least you tried. And the more you try, it just becomes easier and easier. Yeah. And if anyone else and, and if, come in that needs help? And if you're pleasant, professional, and not and presumptuous, yeah. <laughs> and, great. Personal, and a little personal, we could yeah. add another P, personal, pleasant, professional, and not presumptuous, <laughs> they, they're, not, they're probably going to want to do it even if they can't, like my friend. Yeah. And if you can't get back on, just put it in the chat too, because yeah. sometimes oh, I love that. Rachel off, said if we've taken you off camera and uh, <laughs> or you don't want to come on today, that's understandable too. Yeah. Rachel Colby said that Andy Andrews was rejected over fifty times before he was published. I mean, that's great. Do it scared. I love it. <laughs> 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 I mean, you might not <laughs> <brain, but laughs> Yeah. Ruth's got a whole podcast called Do It Scared. So it's kind of, it's just Ooh, kind yeah. of it's fun to listen to. That. That's a neat motto. Do it yeah. scared. Maybe that'll be our motto when it comes to endorsements. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions now that you're coming back online and either to put it in the chat? And we got just a couple minutes that here we wrap up and. I've got a couple announcements, but let's do questions first. Oh, okay. Um, if you want me to give my email in case anybody wants to contact me? Sure. You, know, you know, don't hesitate. I love to help people. Yes. And, uh, Why don't you put it in the chat, Sherilyn? And then yeah, I'll do that. It's, 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 it's editor at the right proposal. Okay. In case anybody's watching afterward. Okay, that'd be great. Say it again, because I was talking. Edit, it's editor at the right proposal, the W-R-I-T-E proposal.com. I love that. I love that. Johnny, do you have some announcements while the recording's still going on that you want to get on? I Let's do. Um, I don't know how long this lasts. Terry Whalen, I have been told, has a half off offer on his how to write a proposal that editors read so you might want to check that out again i don't know how long that's going to go that's, on terry whalen's very good uh -huh. so you might want to check that out and then series writer academy is doing 50 percent off all their courses until tomorrow night so for those watching the replay of course this is tuesday november 27th so this would be to midnight wednesday november 28th uh you need the code it is Save 50, S-A-V-E, five, zero. So those are two different different things. And then writer's chat for next week. Um, actually, I'm going to turn that back over, I think, to Sherilyn. We're having a guest that she recommended or brought to our attention, Dirk Swartz. Did I pronounce his name? Dirk Swartz. He's from South Africa, so if you That's like that bad. South African <laughs> British accent, like British accent, you're gonna love him. Um, and he, he's, he's gonna talk about time time management, but in a different way. He, so I highly suggest it. He's he is a he's actually a coach, a life coach. Wow. But he he's writing a book. I'm helping him with his book. The book is phenomenal. It's about intimacy. But it's not, it's about intimacy with God, intimacy with, it, it, it's just, it's not the typical what we think intimacy is. I'm so excited. He's a phenomenal guy, very educated. You're going to really enjoy it. Besides listening to his accent, you're going to love what he has to say. You're all just going to be going, oh. <laughs> he's, um, he, he, is very, he is very handsome. Can I say that? <laughs> what time will it be over there for him? 
<laughs> I mean, he's he yeah, he's in his thirties, but I'm not. This isn't a dating site. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but he is, he's a very nice guy. Very nice. And, and what very, time will it be for him, Sherilyn? Because that's so kind of him. Will it be like in the middle of the night? I mean, uh, let's see. It will not be 10 o'clock Central, 11 o'clock Eastern. <laughs> no, it will be 7, 2, 3, let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 3, 4, 5, 6. No, it's only about 8 o'clock at night. Okay, right? well, that's not bad. We won't be keeping him up. but Well, that'll be fun and something different next week. So we hope you guys all join us next week. And so as we wrap up the recording, let's say thank you again for Sherilyn. This, it made me a little more confident to focus. This is an, as I said, I, this is an area that's not a strength for me. So it, I think to really focus on this specifically today, and you gave us some real concrete guidelines, and that is great, and, and good examples on that. And we'll close with Rachel's song down there in the chat to the tune of Help Me, Rhonda. Help, help, Sherilyn, help, help, help me. <laughs> I'm not saying it right, but help me, Rhonda. Oh, that's a huge. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. Just do it. Just do it and do it afraid. We even have music that way. We even have music. That's great. <laughs> thank you for being with us this week. And thank you for watching us on the replay. If you're watching us on the replay, please join us next week for a very unique thing on uh, time management and from uh, new approaches to this idea. And yeah, it's, it's really, really great. I, I, it's, it's, it's really good stuff. I'm looking forward to it. I think you're going to join us next week too, aren't you, Sherilyn? If you can, you're yes. going to join us. Yes, yes I will. I, I'm happy with that, that interview. Every week so. now because now that I'm feeling better. Yeah. This is, we're, and we are glad you're all feeling better. Anything else, Johnny, as we close out? I'm good. All right. Thanks, Bye, everyone. Everyone. thanks. We'll see you next week. Those of that are here, stay on for the after party. Bye-bye.